What's good YouTube? It's your boy Demis Art, more than just a pen. Gang, gang! Now today's video, we are going to be working on a drawing of Sanchez from Tottenham. Now, I'm an Arsenal fan and this, this really hurts me, having to draw Tottenham players on the regular. Like, I've drawn Lucas Moura, Sanchez, Harry Kane, I've drawn Son, I'm going to be drawing Ericsson soon. Like, all these Tottenham dead man players that I don't want to be drawing, I have to draw because they're in Champions League and it is what it is, isn't it? But as a game, hey, to do this, I can't really argue. But Arsenal, if you don't make the Champions League next season, if Arsenal don't make the Champions League next season, oh, we're going to have problem. We're going to have a real problem because I can't be drawing these Tottenham players on the regular. Huh? Fix up Arsenal, come on, man. Oh, Pepe, though, with the free kicks, though, what you're not saying. <laughs> he saved us, we got lucky. Um, but yeah. I'm going to be joining Sanchez today and we'll be working. This is a dark skin tone, so I'm going to be obviously giving you guys the voiceover, giving it to you raw, trying to explain everything I was thinking and doing whilst drawing this and hopefully you guys pick up some tips along the way. Now, let's get into this video. Sit back, relax and enjoy it. Thumbs up. So as you can see, we are starting off with the eye. Why do I always start off with the eye? I don't know. I just find it comfortable and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good starting position, you know, because the eyes are the root so. So as you can see, I'm using my Days of Japan black pen. The reason why I like the, the Days of Japan pen so much is because of how thin the nib is. And I feel like with the thin nib, it's really good to go into like the finer details. Um, throughout this video, I'm going to be using different brands of pens. The main reason why I do that is because different brands of pens provide different values and different tones um, and obviously the thickness of the pens and all that stuff there's a lot of difference that's why i buy multiple and try on new ones um as so as you can see with this one compared to the last video i did not use yellow as a base simply because i didn't need it you know and like i told you guys always look at your reference photo know that the colors that you need identify the colors that you need and then go from there don't just say okay the main colors that i use are these four colors orange pink brown and orange orange did i say orange i said yellow orange pink and brown those four colors don't be like okay i need to use them every time because that's not the case it depends on the reference photo if the reference photo says you don't need yellow don't use yellow um, as you can see i'm using the desert japan brown the reason why i'm using that instead of like a steadler which is way thicker is because of the tone this one provides a way darker tone which is what i need for sanchez because he's a fairly dark guy you know he's like your brother over here i'm dark as well so i had to use the darkest brown i have and that is actually the desert japan one the steadler one's a bit on the bright side as you can see here compared to i'm drawing the air right now compared to where the nose area side of the face area you can see the brown is slightly different um a bit darker but yeah for the main details i do use days of J J the days of japan it seems like your boy can't speak i do use days of japan mainly simply because i find that it is the best to do like these really finer details and getting get into them gaps that i feel like i need to get to and again like i always stress to you guys even though i have sketched this out i still like to work in sections i don't really like to start here then move over there then fly over there i like to do my section complete it and then keep building it up also as you can see some of the first layers are really rough um that's but however the lines are still consistent like here what i'm doing here i'm just doing a couple layers really lightly um and you know they're not really clean clean but they're consistent that's the key point when it comes to cross hatching and doing realistic drawings your layers need to be consistent you know it can't just be zigzag looking rough because you can't go back from that but the reason why the first couple of layers are let's just say scruffy they're just really light is simply because i know i'm going to be applying another six seven layers on top or the area might be covered with hair you know so you won't be able to see the first couple of layers but you'll see it slightly underneath instead of just leaving it white because he's not white you know he's not like no one's this white as the paper you know so i still needed to apply some type of layer underneath and yeah just kept on going applying the layers overlapping colors mainly orange and brown that's the main two i use um and just kept on going like that and then adding the details this one's a non-branded pen um which i have as well which you, but, but that also applies a different type of brown now when it comes to dark skin tone you will have to apply more layers than someone that's just caucasian you might as well call it caucasian 
let's just say white you know i'm gonna say white black asian simple that just makes it easier for people to understand all this caucasian african-american no black white asian simple um you know if you were drawing a white guy you would have to create less layers because obviously a dark skin tone there's going to be multiple layers and you can't have the paper coming through because it just it just looks it just looks weird you know you don't want no paper lines coming through so you're gonna have to try and cover up every single inch of the face unless the lighting is shining on the forehead or something like that which i've left these areas as you can see on the side of the face and i haven't touched the forehead yet but i've left a little bit of it um so yeah definitely you're gonna have to create more layers which means more time and yeah it's, it's just a lot of work and to get that right skin tone that you're looking for as well can also be difficult that all depends on the whole free combination you know layer cross hatching and pressure those three things have to be right so here i'm adding in the hair and as you guys have noticed with my previous videos as well i've started to do this quite a bit like i'll i'll do like the skin tone and everything around the area and then i'll apply the hair almost like last ish um i feel like it's worked well for me and because he has curly hair we're doing a lot of like the scribble effect and with hair as you guys know i've always stressed this i don't take it seriously like crazy seriously i'm more i'm very loose with it and i feel like it's worked for me and it's something that i advise you guys to do as well bringing in the brown to make it all look connected we don't want anything looking random we don't want the hair to be like okay he's just placed it there you know what i mean we want it to be like oh okay that's that's sanchez's hair like i see it you know so <clears throat> every time you add hair make sure you apply the color the base color again on top of the hair in order to make it feel and look as if it's part of the actual drawing not that it's just random you know it's the same thing i do when i'm doing hair where the hair is supposed to be i'll normally do it in the skin tone color and then apply the hair on top simply because again we don't want the hair to be looking like a wig we don't want none of that everything needs to fit together we don't want nothing just looking random and out of place and with the hair i'm always telling people doing the flicking motion you know really just flick the wrist no you don't want to cross hatch hair that's just off limits never ever ever i don't care what you're doing <laughs> do not ever attempt to cross hatch hair or you will ruin your drawing thank you very much now that's gone through to your brain i don't want to see none of that again and uh, i got a question today actually about um when i'm doing the cross hatching do i go back and forth or do i just go forth um i always just go forth i don't go back and forth because i create a zigzag line and we don't want none of that so again just forth and pick up your pen every time you do a stroke again the reason why it looks like i'm going back and forth is because i've been doing this for a very long time and of course i've developed my skill over the years you know i have a natural talent for it but also it takes a lot of skill and skill with something that's practiced with multiple hours you just don't wake up and have skill you, you it's just them constant hours constant practice and yeah you just get better and better at it and as you see here with the hair while i was talking about doing the skin tone underneath and then applying the hair on top as you can see it's working and it doesn't look like sanchez's hair it's just out of place it looks like it's a part of the drawing which is exactly what we're going for so that's a little tip there for you guys i'm giving you a ton of tips with these voiceovers so hopefully you guys are taking them in not just skipping through the video because you're gonna miss out on some tips um but yeah if you have any questions as well make sure to comment below i will definitely try and answer the questions to my best of my ability i'm definitely trying to help you guys and yeah if you're looking for any real time tutorial videos with voiceover helping you guys throughout the drawing from start to finish i have plenty of tutorials on my patreon page you know for just for a, sub, for a small subscription fee of five dollars a month you get access to all the tutorials that i have on there i have tutorials on everything skin tone shading cross hatching how to draw a face how to draw hair different types of hair blonde ginger curly hair um, braided hair there's a ton of tutorials on there I've, I've lost count how many tutorials i actually have on patreon it's easily over 60 and i'm still trying to build on it i haven't been very active on it these last couple of months but still trying to push myself to try to be more active and have more tutorials for you guys always here to help and i want to spread the ballpoint pen game you know i know it's a very difficult medium 
but again i believe that we can make it we can make it big you know we can get more and more people into it it's a very inexpensive tool it's not expensive to buy and again you don't need expensive art supplies to create art that's the message that i live by and yeah don't get me wrong i i say to myself that i need to try other mediums um really to also develop those um here as the neck as you can see everything's flowing it's going in the same direction it's almost like a curve shape whenever i'm doing necks that's the, my main approach i like to do it like that and i feel like it looks more of like a neck you know um maybe i don't know someone might have a different approach that that works better if you do make sure to comment below so i can try it out but for me this kind of flow of the neck works best for me now here i'm doing the shirt now and obviously they wear a white shirt so that's not much there but this collar area um at first i was drawing there and i was like okay it's just just dark blue let me add a bit of black because it's not just dark blue it's a different type of blue and i don't have that pen so i'm gonna do it blue mixing with black and here comes the whole cross hatching pressure and layering like you need to understand you have to have control of the pen when you're doing this because like you see it's already giving a different tone of blue but this is all because of the control and the layering and the cross hatching that i have done and also inside it says spurs now i at the first i think it was, it was the first ton of player that i drew i didn't really notice it i just thought okay what's all this stuff on the on the, on the collar you know i didn't really notice that it said spurs on it um so yeah have to add it in you know add in the spurs i was just like oh really you have to have spurs on there as well now you just come in my life even harder thank you um and then add a little bit more layers on top you know with these drawings as well the truth is a drawing is never complete i that's how i personally feel i feel like a drawing is never done you can always add more as you can see here i'm adding a bit of red you know why because I, I saw red that's literally the answer if i see it i apply it i don't care if i see purple if i see purple i'm applying it to my drawing because that's what i see you know so don't be afraid to like if you see a certain color unless you're color blind you know then that then i don't know <laughs> i can't really help you with that but if you see a color apply it and yeah here we're just working on the background it's the final stage um recently i've been doing like colors that kind of relate to the drawing you know and i don't want it to overpower the drawing as well so i've been making it more subtle with my background so i'm just using my arteza uh, watercolor pencils here really lightly they're also linked in the description if you are interested and then i use a cotton bud and um, baby oil to smoothen it out and yeah that's it for the voiceover hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure to smash the thumbs up if you ain't already subscribed subscribe and i will catch you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching peace